criminal society. Uh, well, in the past there were just kids, teenagers there. Cyber vandals, uh, which made uh, cyber, which made cyber attacks uh, and they wrote viruses just for fun, um, just to prove themselves. Uh, now most of them they are cyber criminals, uh, which are driven by profit. Uh, they develop malware or they attack uh, home computers or enterprises to steal the information to um, to have their hands on the systems to use uh, these uh, uh, computer networks, and they have a quite uh, unfortunately quite a big profit from that. Uh, until they are arrested, <laughs> and uh, uh, well, and uh, there are another group of uh, uh, people who are behind all these attacks. We call them hacktivists. Uh, people who are they have a different uh, motivation. It's not money. It's not profit. Uh, most of them uh, they do it like a protest. Just like that group that was revealed in the cases against WikiLeaks, uh, yeah, yeah, anonymous. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And the, so these people used to hack into uh, Visa, Mastercard. Recently, Apple. S see, I was wondering, are these people who are idea-driven more dangerous just than just hackers who did for money? It's a good question, and uh, I'm, afr I'm afraid they could be more dangerous because. Uh, there are much more of these people. Uh, many of them, they are very professional, and uh, sometimes, times what the what bad guys do for money is uh, less dangerous than others do just for fun or like protest. And uh, it's even more dangerous because uh, they are getting more experienced, and they are they have a better ideas, new ways how to hack, how to. Um, stop internet services, how to damage their infrastructure. I'm afraid that uh, they could be their places for terrorists mm -hmm. to employ these forces. I'm afraid that in the future cyber terrorism uh, will kidnap or force them uh, in other ways uh, to design and to manage cyber terrorism attacks. So the I'm threat is huge. I'm afraid it's really huge because we depend on IT, we depend on computers, networks. Everything around is just a computer. Um, in cars, in planes, in uh, industrial environment, in transportation, in everywhere. And unfortunately not every network is designed in a secure way. Unfortunately, it's possible to attack the systems in different ways. So I'm afraid we are in a very dangerous world, which is even more dangerous than in the past. I'm afraid that's really, really serious, and that's bad news. The good news is that governments finally understood that, and I see that they pay a lot of attention to the problem. And uh, I see that they escalate there, these questions, and they even started to uh, cooperate on the international level uh, to find their answer for this. So the only way to respond to, uh, exactly. to a threat of that scale is with cooperating with governments? Exactly, and exactly, because this pr services. the problem is international, because the Internet doesn't have borders. And malicious code or cyber attacks, they pass the national borders with the speed of the Internet. Uh, so the only way to, to stop that, the only way to make this world more secure, more safe, uh, is international cooperation. And uh, what I see, I see more and more reports about uh, international, uh, international meetings or organizations or projects. That's a good news. But see, the other side of the coin uh, when it comes to government cooperation with hackers or people who are creating uh, or fighting viruses is that last year, for example, experts concluded that a virus called Stuxnet that was used to attack and destabilize the Bushehr plant in Iran, um, it was actually produced with state support. For example, Israel could be United States. Um, are cyber wars between nations like a reality already and we don't know about that? We have just one uh, one incident, and uh, uh, we have this information from. Well, I personally have this information from two sources. First of all, first of all, uh, that's a malicious code, uh, the virus itself, 
and from the news because uh, secret services or mm -hmm. nuclear power plants people they don't report me <laughs> so then from the court i see that uh, this is, this is a very complicated very sophisticated malicious uh, code uh, it's uh, that's a very big project. There was, I think there was a group of uh, high-end experts to design that. Your business directly depends on cybercrime. If one day cybercrime is completely illuminated, would that put you out of business? Uh, well, that's my, uh, that was very big dream, uh, to have a big red button, stop cybercrime. <laughs> and if I will have uh, this button, I will press it. Uh, but I don't afraid about the business, sir. I think I will find something else. Another job, another industry, maybe a different project, uh, because I still, I still want to work. <laughs> Eugene Kaspersky, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you.